I have some notes here, uh, which is going to be presented by uh, Yun Chen and Ling Feng Pei, who are PhD candidates at uh, NUS. Yun is interested in secure processor design and microarchitecture micro -architectural side channels. And uh, Ling Feng is interested in FPGA accelerators and hardware security. And today they are going to talk to us about uh, uh, how, how to use uh, prefetcher side channels uh, with uh, after image. So please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yun Chen, and this is Ling Feng Pei. So today, we are very excited to introduce our newest work, After Image, which is a new set channel attack using Intel hardware prefetcher. Microarchitecture attacks, uh, as many people know, many of them rely on the catch primitives or speculative execution. But we haven't seen many works uh, on non-speculative execution paths. Thus, in this work, we studied the hardware prefetcher. The prefetcher, as many know, brings data into cache before CPU actually uses it, which can improve the performance. It is located in the back end of the processor, and uh, it is not related on the speculative execution. Based on the understanding of a specific prefetcher named IP thread prefetcher in Intel, we construct after image to leak sensitive information from applications. I will first start with the reverse engineering and then go through the thread model and experimental setup. After that, I will give an overview of uh, after image. Ling Feng will then introduce attacking details, mitigations, and conclude this work. As public known, the IP thread prefetcher tracks the instruction pointer, or we can see the program counter of the load. It will record the threaded access pattern and uh, predict uh, the memory access based on this pattern, and then load it uh, into the cache in advance. We reverse engineered the Intel's hardware prefetcher uh, and found that it only has 24 entries with LRU replacement policy. But more importantly, we found that it is only indexed by the bottom eight bits of the PC, and there is no extra tag checking mechanism. This gives a potential contention result for us. We then spend time on understanding the thread update policy. Consider the below example. The load instruction will first access the element zero of the array, and the IP and other information will be inserted into an entry of the prefetcher. Then we access the element two. The stride and the confidence are then updated. When we access the element four, we found that uh, the prefetcher start prefetching things. And this implies that the confidence threshold in Intel is two. And, this, and also the element six will be brought uh, into the cache. So if the domain switch, maybe we go to another application, a new load instruction may match with the well-trained entry, and its memory access, for example, uh, element seven, could make a different stride compared to the recorded one. But we found that uh, we, uh, the prefetcher is still triggerable and uh, prefetch the element nine into the cache. This implies that uh, the uh, Intel IP stride prefetcher will first prefetch and then update the confidence and the stride, which make a potential attack channel. We also note that uh, the prefetcher will stop prefetch uh, for the further access, and we will introduce why it is matter later. For the threat model, we assume the attacker can analyze the victim binary to get some IP information, and also uh, the attacker is running on the same physical call with the victim. For the experiment, we launch our attack on a Haswell and a Coffee Lake machine with Ubuntu 18.04. Now I will give an overview of after, after image. Consider a victim that has a secret dependent branch. The attacker will first analyze the IP of the victim and generate a load instruction that matches the target load instruction in the victim. And uh, he will then mistreat the prefetcher with a given stride. 
Later, the victim will run, and then if the target load is executed, the attacker can then review the secret uh, from the uh, cache by detecting the stride in the cache. Instead of using the cache, we also provide an alternative method that uh, check if the prefetch is still triggerable or not. Uh, and it will avoid using the cache primitives. We will introduce it more later. And then uh, Linfun will start to introduce the rest part of our work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Yun. Uh, so let's first take a look at how a cross user and user boundary attack can be implemented. So we, on the right side, we have the victim code uh, and the clean prefetcher. So the victim has a secret condition that the attacker aims to leak, and the secret condition can determine the uh, execution direction of the branch. Under these two directions of the branch, there are two load instructions uh, with IP of 5C and 8E, respectively. Now, an uh, attacker shows up. It first analyzes the target load instructions. Uh, this can be done by using this assembly tool such as object dump, and it creates a local duplicates. Next, it trains two entries of the prefetcher with the gadget, and the gadget here is simply a loop. And uh, note that uh, we are using two different strides to train the two load instructions to better distinguish them uh, in the future. Later on, the victim uses its own secret to decide the actual execution of the load instructions, and 5C is executed. This will create a collision in the history table and uh, uh, lead to the prefetcher to trigger stride 7. In the end, the attacker detects the existence of a stride in a catch. So what we can see from the catch, uh, we use a flash reload method as a catch primitive to extract secret, but what we are really focused on is the stride. On the right side, uh, the horizontal axis represents the index of cache lines, and the uh, uh, vertical axis represents the access time to each cache line. So initially, for untouched sets, those dark dots represent, uh, so those uh, dark dots has a high access time because they are in the DRAM instead of in the cache. And we also see some noises, which is the yellow dots. Then, the attacker trims the load instruction in the if pass with stride 7 and else pass with stride 13. We let the victim to run two rounds of the branch. Now, from the result, we see that a stride of 7 exists. This implies that the if pass was executed by the victim, and uh, we can also see a stride of 13 exists for the else pass. Does it also work for cross-user kernel and SGX isolation? Uh, the answer is yes. To demonstrate that, we built a custom kernel module in Linux, and we also create a SGX enclave. Uh, similarly, we use flash and reload to extract the secret and uh, train the stride to be 13. Uh, so the if path can also be inferred by the attacker and uh, the stride is observed. Now we want to take two steps further. So first, we want to attack a real-world application. And second, we want to get rid of the cache primitives, which really makes this attack stand alone. To do this, we propose a technique called prefetch status checking technique to extract the secret. Following the, sa following the same process, the instruction 5C is trained by the attacker with a special stride of 7, and the victim touches the, the 5C load. What happens now is that uh, the stride value is updated in the prefetcher and the confidence is reset. Therefore, the, the attacker will find that uh, the prefetcher will no longer be triggerable. Therefore, it can infer the execution of the load and the victim's secret to be one. Our target application is the Montgomery Ladder RSA algorithm, which is a timing constant algorithm to defense against timing set channels by simply measuring the execution time of different branches. In this algorithm, different directions will always execute the same function call, and only the inputs will be different. However, it still uses the private key to determine the direction of the branch. We show that we can break this timing constant RSA within a short time. This is because some distinguished load instructions are generated in different directions. And the attacker can match load instructions PC in the if branch and train prefetcher. We also use prefetcher status checking technique to avoid using cache primitives. 
the horizontal axis represents the secret key bit and uh, the uh, vertical axis represents the access time. If the prefetch status gets reset by the victim, the attacker will no longer to trigger prefetching and uh, it will see a high access time. In the end, we propose a lightweight defense, which is basically to clear the prefetcher whenever the contest switch happens. We implement it using a simulator called Champson, which is the platform to evaluate many state-of-the-art prefetchers. We found, out, or found that our mitigation has an overhead of less than 0.2%, while a naive mitigation that to disable the prefetcher will introduce a 15% of performance overhead. To conclude this work, we first reverse engineer Intel IP Stripe prefetcher. We revealed many undocumented features. And second, we leak control flow data and we track load instructions timing information across different privileged domains, such as uh, threads, process, user kernel, and SGX. And third, we extract the private key of the timing constant the RSA within a short time. And in the end, we propose this lightweight defense. And we are happy to take any questions.